What's going on, TikTok family? How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Listen, the Holy Spirit has given me a word for you guys on today, and I feel like in the season that we are in now, I feel like this word is so important because God was God has been dealing with me a lot about this specific subject, and He's been um He's been ministering to me. He's been giving me a lot of wisdom, and I want to share this wisdom and this information with you guys this evening. TikTok family, what's going on? Hey, let's get some people on here. Listen, begin to like this live. The sooner you guys like this live, the more you guys like this live video, the more viewers we will get on here. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know it's been a while. I know it's been a while. Listen, I was sick for a week. Then I went to Atlanta. I was on my trip. You know, I just got back a few days ago. So listen, I'm going to start going live a lot more often because I know a lot of people have been asking me, why why haven't I been going live? Where you been at? Where you been at? You Okay. I've been, I've been fine, y'all. I've been fine. Listen, the Holy Spirit has been ministering to me more than ever. Listen, it is time for us to increase in our prayer life, increase in our fasting. Listen, this is your year. Amen. This is the year of elevation. This is the year of breakthrough, not just physically, but internally. This is the year where God breaks the shackles off of your mind. This is the year where you begin to walk in purity, walk in sanctification. This is the year where you begin to walk in purpose and take full dominion over your life, over your finances. Amen. Come on here, somebody. And this is also the year where God wants you to begin to intercede for other people. Come on here. Listen, you walking in your purpose is not just about you, but it's also about the nations and the generations that come. It's about your children. Amen. It's about your children's children and them reaping the benefits and reaping the harvest of the seeds that you are sowing today. So listen, I want to talk to you guys today about prayer and intercession, prayer and intercession. And before I get into it, we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. So we already got a few hundred people on here. Continue to like this live video because the more you guys like it, the more viewers we will get on here. I believe the, uh, the spirit of God has a beautiful word that he wants me to share with you guys on today. So listen, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as we step into this new year, as we step into this new season, that you continue to elevate us and empower us to do the works that you sent us to do, O oh God. I pray that you engraft the supernatural power of, of your own, um, the supernatural power of your word, of your truth into our hearts and into our spirits, O oh God. I pray that you align us, O oh God, with your spirit, align us with your will for our lives, O oh God. I pray that you sanctify us and purify us in this hour. I pray that you cleanse our minds and our thoughts and purify our hearts, O oh God and create in us a heart that desires only your will for our life, oh God. I pray that you would expand the mantle and the anointing that you have placed over our lives, expand uh, and stretch our capacity to be able to understand. I pray that you would expand and stretch even our ability to be able to demonstrate your power and demonstrate the gifts that you have given unto us. Increase us even in spiritual ranking, oh God. I pray that you would train and equip us to be spiritual snipers and enforcers for the kingdom of heaven. Increase us in the mastery of the gifts that you have given unto us, oh God. I pray that you would increase us in our knowledge and our wisdom and help us to grow in the things of our, of your spirit, O oh God. I pray that you bring us into a higher dimension of your revelation. Begin to open up the realm of creativity. Open up the realm of innovation in our lives in the name of Jesus. And I pray and I decree and declare that everybody listening under the sound of my voice would walk in their God-given purpose with no hindrances or delays. Every visible and invisible barrier that was sent to stop or block your path. I break it down now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel every plan of Satan from manifesting in your physical life in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We honor your name and we praise you. I pray that you would release your legions of angels to begin to wage war on our behalf. I pray for angelic activity cons uh, considering concerning our businesses, concerning our lives, concerning our children's and everything concerning us on every side in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that your fire would expose all pending covert attacks against our lives in Jesus' name and I pray that you would make your face and your glory to shine upon everybody listening listening under the sound of my voice, oh God. Empower us to walk in authority. Empower us to walk in full and total and complete dominion, oh God. In Jesus' mighty and exalted name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We honor your name and we praise you. We glorify you. We reference you because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, <clears throat> listen, I want to talk to y'all about prayer and intercession. Listen, Prayer and intercession is so important. I believe that prayer and intercession, right, is one of the most important gifts and more important skills to have, especially as a believer. And I believe it's also one of the least taught subjects in the body of Christ, right? And it's also a subject that has the most error and the most misunderstanding when it comes to prayer and intercession. I've noticed the more God corrected me in my prayer life and the more he taught me, the more I realized that most Christians don't actually know how to pray effectively, 
Right. Most Christians weren't taught that there are principles and laws when it comes to prayer. And there is, you know, there, there's basically a certain formula, I want to say, in principles to efficacious prayer or prayer that commands results. Right. Prayer that begins to open the floodgates of heaven in your life. Prayer that commands change and transformation in your life. Come on here, somebody. Y'all with me? Y'all ain't with me. So check this out. And people want to say things, right? People want to say things like, oh, I pray every day. And they wake up every morning. They say, God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I pray that you give me guidance this day. And that's it. That's it. That's all they know how to pray. And I hate to burst anyone's bubble, right? But that's not enough. If you're praying for five, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, that is not enough for you to be able to impact and shift a whole nation and generation. That's not enough for you to become an impactful believer. That's not enough for you to be able to change and transform somebody else's life. So people who think and say things like, oh, I already know how to pray. I don't, I don't, I don't need to learn how to pray. A lot of times those are people that are prideful and arrogant. And a lot of times those are the very people that don't know how to pray. Amen. And then they wonder why their prayers don't get answered. So listen, I want you guys, even when we get off this live, I want you guys to go read Matthew chapter five and six. All right. And this is very important because you'll notice that prayer is actually one of the last things that Jesus taught his disciples how to do. First, Jesus taught his disciples spiritual laws and principles. He taught them about adultery. He taught them about divorce. He taught them about loving your neighbor, loving your enemy. He taught them all these different things first because Jesus knew if his disciples knew how to pray, but didn't know how God wanted them to live or they didn't know the laws and principles they had to follow, they would have all these things stopping up their prayer lives and their prayers would no longer be effective. So I want y'all to understand that first and foremost. If you know how to pray, but you don't know the spiritual laws and principles that God wants you to follow, if you don't know how God wants you to live, if you don't know your purpose in life, your prayers are no longer gonna become effective. Jesus never intended you to pray without knowing how to act or live according to what you're praying for. Come on here, somebody. So if you're still living in sin, you're not living how God wants you to live. You still got evil desires in your hearts. You still got unforgiveness. You still got bitterness in your heart. Maybe you're still dishonoring and disrespecting people and you don't understand that all these things are actually stopping up your prayers. All of these things that are laying dormant in your heart, they're stopping up your prayer life. Because when you're praying to God, you're still, you're still giving the enemy the legal right over your life. So there are still demons that have the legal right to come in and stop up your atmosphere, which is affecting your prayer life, which we also see in Daniel chapter 10, right? If you see in Daniel chapter 10, there was the prince of Persia that was holding up angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel was trying to bring a word from God. He was trying to bring revelation to Daniel. And it was Daniel's continual fasting and praying for 21 days. He didn't let up. He wasn't living in sin. He wasn't doing this. He wasn't drinking, getting high. He wasn't having sex, watching pornography. He was fasting and he was praying. His obedience with his fasting and his praying and his sanctification is what empowered uh, Archangel Michael to come and then help Angel Gabriel. Then Angel Gabriel was finally able to come and bring the word of God and the answer to Daniel's prayers. I hope y'all catching this right now. I hope y'all catching this. So this is this is the same thing, right, with fasting and praying. People fast and pray, but then they watch pornography. People fast and pray, but then they drink or they get high. People fast and pray, but then they're still living in sin. So therefore, your fasting and praying is now in vain. We have to know how to act and live accordingly to what we're praying for. You have to ask yourself, you have to ask God, what is stopping up your prayer life in this season? Is it bitterness? Is it unforgiveness? Is it resentment? Are you still living in sin? Are you drinking? Are you smoking? Are you in a toxic relationship that was not ordained by God? So many people need to understand that God cannot entrust you with certain blessings or he cannot entrust you with certain responsibilities as long as you still have these things operating in your life. Come on here, somebody. So you're not creating enough room for God to work in your heart because your heart is still filled with all the wrong things. Understand your heart posture can 100% affect your prayers from getting answered. <clears throat> this is something that's not talked about enough, right? People talk about prayer all the time, but they don't talk about the principles to prayer and things that could potentially be stopping up your prayer life. Your pastors, 
They pray things to you that make you feel good all day long, but they don't talk to you about fasting and prayer. They don't talk to you about sanctification. They don't talk to you about laws and principles. Uh, everybody needs to hear this. Even I needed to hear this. Amen. These are things we have to deal with, if we, uh, deal with if we want to see answers to our prayers in this coming year. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about so, um, is so many times we talk about the sins of our heart. But we don't talk about the wounds of our heart. Come on here, somebody. Because a lot of times your wounds, your pain, your trauma, they end up turning into bitterness. And you might be sitting there thinking, well, I don't wish bad on anybody. I ain't never did nothing wrong to nobody. But check this out. If somebody does you wrong and something bad happens to that person, and then you think to yourself, ah, well, that's what they get. Maybe they'll learn next time. Boom. You got bitterness in your heart. Your heart posture is incorrect because of the trauma that you went through. It's we got to deal with this. Your woundedness and your trauma has now turned into bitterness at the very root. And now this becomes part of your attitude. It becomes part of your character. And all of these things will affect your heart posture, therefore affecting your prayer life as well. I hope y'all catching this on today because I feel like especially going into the year of 2024, we want to see results to our prayers. Amen. We want to see transformation. We want to see change in our lives. <clears throat> so you have to be praying from a place of purity. Even things that you've been through that weren't necessarily your fault. Trauma that you've been through that wasn't your fault can still create things in your heart that affect your prayer. So we have to understand the schemes and the wiles of the enemy. Amen. A lot of times people and pastors, they just act like the schemes of the enemy don't matter. But listen, we need to understand these things. Even trauma that you've been through that wasn't your fault can create bitterness and resentment in your heart that will hinder an answer to your prayers. A lot of times, even these things, right? These things that are laying dormant in your heart, like bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, offense, all of these things in your heart can even cloud your vision to be able to know how to pray correctly. So not only will it answer, not only will it stop up answers to your prayers, but it's going to cloud your vision. They cloud your discernment. All these things in your heart, um, what does it do? It's going to block up your revelation because if your vision is clouded, you're not even going to be able to hear from God correctly. If you cannot hear from God correctly, now you don't even know what to pray for. Come on here, somebody. Listen, this is something that we all need to understand, especially in this season. Check this out. So a lot of people aren't aware, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'll be done soon, okay? I love you. <clears throat> so a lot of people are not aware that they're praying things spoken to them by their trauma rather than the desires of God. Come on here, somebody. A lot of you right now might be praying for things that are spoken to you by your woundedness rather than praying for the desires of God for your life. Now, how can this be? Because if some of the things that are still in your heart, you might not have, if some of these things are still in your heart, you might not have the desires of God. If you have not received healing or deliverance, you might not be praying the desires of God for your life. Yes, the Bible says, I will give you the desires of your heart, but people love to abuse these scriptures. This is on the condition that your desires match with the desires of God. This is on the condition that your heart aligns with the heart posture of God. Or people, because of their wounds, they don't have the right intent or the right motives when they're praying. This happens a lot with people who have been hurt by authority figures. Maybe you've been hurt or rejected by family members, by somebody that you used to be in a relationship with. Amen. People, um, you've been rejected or hurt by people or broken. Um, your, your heart has been broken by people whose opinion you cared about. You can tell somebody who is bitter to the roots by listening to the way that they speak watching their behavior, people who are always hostile, people who are always reacting and responding to people in offense. People who always say things like, oh, well, I'm going to act accordingly to how they treat me, or I just tell it like it is. And a lot of times, these people that are like this, they're just hurt. You know, you understand, hurt people hurt people. And they haven't learned how to regulate or manage their emotions, so now they're just rude and they act like that to everybody. They just want to hurt everybody. Now, what does this have to do with prayer? Because people that act this way, right, because these are people who act, think, talk, and even pray according to their pain, they never see results in their life. They never see the results they want to in their life because they haven't dealt with their hearts at the very root. So listen, 
Hebrews chapter 12 verses 15 says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this many become defiled. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and many become defiled. So yes, people can become so bitter or so broken, they begin to pray things that are spoken to them by their trauma. So when people are praying things that don't align with the desires of God, you now you don't even know if God is in agreement with what you're praying for. And now you end up asking God to do things and answer prayers that are completely out of his nature and character to answer. Come on, hey, listen, a lot of people don't want to hear. This is the part that Christians don't want to hear, but it's the honest to God truth. That's why having this level of maturity and understanding these principles is so important. Otherwise, people continue to pray and miss, right? You continue to pray and miss. Understanding these things will completely change your prayer life and change your perspective on prayer as well. The thing is, an intercessor, God cannot trust you to pray for his people and to intercede for people if you have things in your heart that will cause you to act in ways that might lead people astray. This is dealing with the wounds in the heart. Things at the very root. Having too many bad things at the roots in your heart will actually create a stumbling block for other people. Y'all with me or y'all ain't with me? So all these things have to be dealt with, especially people that want to be used by God to pray. Uh, people that want to be used by God to win souls for the kingdom of heaven. We have to allow God to create in us a clean heart when ministering to and praying for other people. You can't be laying hands on people and you got all this bitterness and anger inside of you. You can't be laying hands on people and as soon as somebody makes you angry, you cussing people out. You can't be laying hands on people and you ain't had deliverance from your, uh, from your demons. Somebody said the baby in the background. Yeah, my son keeps on trying to. Jordan, can you go? I'm almost done, all right? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I just want you to hug. All right, give me a hug. My bad, y'all. Come on. Listen, it's time to clean up our hearts, amen? It's time to receive healing. It's time to receive character development. It's time to purify our thoughts, purify our hearts. Listen, the thing is, as believers, we are supposed to be covering other people in prayer. We're supposed to be covering situations in prayer, covering our nation, covering our children in prayer. But if we are not right and the people that God called upon are also demonized and also oppressed and also traumatized, then who is God going to send to cover his people? Who is God going to send to cover his people? It is our job to intercede, but yet we have so many Christians that would rather gossip about someone than intercede for them. Have you guys noticed that? You guys ever been to those churches that would rather gossip about somebody's downfall or rather gossip about what somebody's going through instead of interceding for them and actually praying for those people? It's the biggest, like it makes my stomach turn. It makes my stomach turn. And what does this show? It shows immaturity. It shows bad heart posture. If we had more believers praying and interceding for people instead of talking about each other and tearing each other down, maybe the body of Christ would actually be able to come into unity and we would be able to stand against the devil. But when we're, when we're, tearing, uh, when we're tearing each other down instead of praying for people, we're doing exactly what the enemy wants us to do. It's just, listen, we are supposed to pray and intercede for people, and it's God's job to convict and heal people and change and transform people. And there are times that we confront sin or that we hold people accountable, yes, but after the situation has been saturated in prayer, and there's a certain way that God wants us to confront these things, and we have to use wisdom when doing so. Maturity and being seasoned in the spirit learns how to fight battles in the prayer closet. Maturity learns how to fight battles in the spirit. Understand this is a spiritual battle that we are in, not a physical battle. I'm, gonna post, I'm definitely going to post this on YouTube. I love y'all. I'm, I'm going to post this on YouTube for sure. So when we pray and we come together in prayer groups, when we fight battles in life and instead of reacting and responding in certain ways, instead of reacting in anger, instead of quarreling with people, instead of talking about people, we go into the prayer closet. We close the door when we get on our knees. Watch God begin to do the impossible. Watch there begin to be a shift, not only in the realm of the spirit, but when we shift things in the realm of the spirit, things begin to manifest and shift in the physical as well. This is the clean heart principle. Listen, being an intercessor comes from the very heart. That's why I'm teaching you guys this thing and I'm talking about these, the, you know, all the things that, are, might, that might be still laying dormant in your heart. Because being an intercessor in our prayers come from the heart 
We have to be uh, praying for a pl from a place of purity. I'm sorry. Keep on stumbling over my words. So that's why your heart has to be clean. Your heart has to be pure. Your thought process has to be pure. You have to receive healing to be an effective intercessor. The cleaner our hearts are before God, the more welcome we can make him in our hearts. The more he shares with us. The deeper he brings us in revelation. The higher he brings us in the spirit. And the more effective our prayers become. So as we begin to open the doors, right? As we begin to open the doors to all the dark rooms in our hearts, the things that we've been hiding from people. Listen, when you're hiding and harboring your sin and you're hiding those dark places and trying to ignore them, you're actually protecting demons from the power of God. Open up and confess. Open up those dark rooms within your heart and allow the spirit to begin to deal at the bottom and very roots of the very roots. When you pray for character development, you ask God to create in you a clean heart. This is something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I want you guys to be aware of because I've dealt with this as well. Amen. Even recently, I've dealt with this. When you pray for character development and you ask God to create in you a clean heart, God revealed to me what is laying dormant in my heart. Uproot it and tear it down. You think that he will automatically begin to manifest his character within you. But check this out. As you pray for character development and pray for a clean heart, you think it's all going to be fixed right then and there. And the crazy thing is, even in my experience, I ended up realizing a lot of times it's actually the opposite. Because as I was praying for character development, I was praying for God to reveal to me and bring to the surface what was still laying dormant in my heart that was not of him. I noticed that my character actually started to get worse. Check this out. A lot of you might be dealing with this or you might deal with this in the future. So whether it was it was lust or whether it was anger or whether it was my offense, God was actually allowing these things to tempt me to their fullest extent. So it's like God was purposely putting me in situations to where I would get provoked by somebody and I would I would get out of character or I would react and respond in anger. I would get really offensive. It's like he was pushing me to get out of character, but it was it was so that he could amplify and re reveal to me what was still laying dormant in my heart. It was so that he could show me clear as day what was still in me that had to go. So it's like God was actually putting me in situations so that these things were amplified and so that he could reveal to me and so that I could see clear as day what was in my heart. And this brought me to a point of complete and total surrender. It brought me on my face like, God, please strip this thing from me. But listen, when you pray for character development, a lot of times God will bring these things to the surface and he does it by amplifying these things and causing you to get out of character, causing you to fall into those temptations so that you can see clear as day what has to go. And you begin to fall on your face. You begin to say, God, please, I beg you, please strip me of this thing. And then his nature and his character begins to fully be able to manifest through you. Amen. Because so many of these things, they're still, they're being suppressed. They're laying dormant in your heart and God has to uproot them and he has to pull them out of you and tear them down so that the spirit of God has more room to begin to fill you and manifest through you. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Listen, it's okay. Listen, we have his grace. We have his mercy. And this is the beginning of your training to becoming a mighty warrior and becoming an intercessor for his kingdom. Because so many people say, things like, I'm sanctified, this and that. But part of your sanctification, you have to get deliverance. You have to receive healing. You have to uproot and tear down character flaws. There's a lot to come, that comes with this. It's a process. It's a process. But we have his grace and his mercy while doing so. Amen. It starts from digging up the very root of what's in your heart. Most people think about prayer and you notice if you guys thought about prayer right now, like before you guys got on this live video, these are the last things that you guys were probably thinking about when it came to prayer. Amen. So many people pray for physical breakthrough, but they have not yet broken through internally. They still have shackles on their mind. They still have impurities. They still have demons in their heart or demons in their soul. They still have bitterness, unforgiveness in their heart. Listen, as soon as you receive internal breakthrough, the external breakthrough will be inevitable. I want you guys to pray for character development, pray for a clean heart, pray for God to, to purify your mind, purify your heart. And I pray that you guys, I want you guys to pray for sanctification in this season. Amen. I want you guys to pray for internal breakthrough in this season. 
Once you guys break through internally, the physical breakthrough is already going to come. This is going to lead to the next principle I want to talk about is the faith principle. The faith principle. Listen, Mark chapter 11, verses 22. Come on here. Listen, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Listen, when you pray to God, you have to believe as if it's already yours and it will be done for you here on earth. When you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive your sins. So again, with the heart principle, when you are praying and repenting to God, make sure that you are forgiving people. I don't care if you have to, to pray to God and forgive them every single day for the next six months until you've actually forgiven them in your heart. Do that. Do whatever it takes. I've had to forgive people a hundred times. There's certain people in my life that did me so wrong, I had to forgive them a hundred times. Probably more than that. Every day I had to forgive them over and over and over and over again because there were, there were times in my life right where I said that I forgave somebody but my actions and the way that I treated or communicated with that person showed that I still hadn't forgiven that person. A lot of you think that you've forgiven somebody, that you've, you've forgiven them with your mouth, but you haven't forgiven them in your heart. God is going to hold this against you. Amen. And when you pray, again, you have to believe in what you're praying for. So many people pray for things. But then they have doubts. Then they have worries. They're not sure if God is actually going to do what they say they want him to do. So lack of faith and lack in believing in his ability is a huge principle. Lack of faith and lack in belief, lack in believing in God's word is going to stop up your prayer life. So if you pray for something, but then you don't have the faith or you doubt or you worry that God's not going to do it, you're stopping up your prayers. You're offending God because of your perception of him. Amen. So many people base God's ability or what he can do off of what he's already done. And maybe you don't have the best situation. Maybe you, you come from a situation that doesn't look the greatest. Maybe you come from a household of addiction. Maybe you come from poverty. So if you're basing what God can do off of how you grew up, you're completely limiting what he can do in your life. So many of you have had the capacity for doubt. Many of you have had the capacity for fear. Many of you have had the capacity for worry. I want to pray that God begin to stretch and expand your capacity to believe in his will for your life. Come on here, somebody. I pray that God begin to expand and stretch your capacity for faith in this season. I want to pray that the same faith of the bleeding woman that was healed by touching the cloak of Jesus begin to fall upon your life today in Jesus' name. Listen, you have to understand when you pray without faith, you're wasting your breath. Do you believe in, in your heart the things that you're praying for? I want you to begin to expand even your perception of God. I want you to expand and stretch the capacity in which you see God. We need faith in this season. A lot of people don't see signs, wonders, and miracles in their lives. And they don't receive the healing that they need or that they want because they have little to no faith. So God is going to hold his hand from moving on certain people because your lack of faith is offending God. And I know as human beings, listen, as human beings, especially if you've been through a lot of pain and trauma, if your situation doesn't look the greatest, it's hard for some of us to understand that his capabilities are limited. But listen, we have, if we have faith, come on here, somebody, if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, the Bible says we can tell this mountain to move from here to here and it will move. When you pray and intercede for people with true faith and believe in what you're praying for with a pure heart. Watch your prayers begin to move mountains, not only for your life, but once you see results in your life, just think about the way that God will use you to intercede for other people. Think about the change and transformation that you can also bring to the nations and the people around you, to your family, to your children. Come on here, somebody. As soon as you begin to pray, but then you have doubt and worry, you're closing the windows of heaven over your life. Once you have these things down, and once you understand these principles, now it's time to intercede. Now it's time to intercede. Come on here, somebody. Say it's time to intercede. It's time to intercede. It's time to intercede. Come on here, listen. It's time to understand your authority 
and understand that you are an enforcer in the kingdom of heaven. I want this also to be something you guys work on. I want you to begin praying for other people. We are not only called to pray for ourselves and pray for our family and friends. We have to become believers that pray and intercede for the people around us. Praying for people in politics, praying for people in the industry, the media, the government. Praying for other ministries, praying for our nation, our children. Listen, it's the lack of prayer for our nation while the enemy's been able to swoop in and snatch everything up. It's the lack of prayer for our nation. It's the lack of prayer within the body of Christ, within our ministries. Why the enemy has been able to push his agenda onto us. We have to become prophetic intercessors so that we can intervene and intercede for people that are dealing with problems, people that are dealing with oppression. We, need, we can begin dealing with, uh, with people's errors. We can begin dealing with people's needs, a lot of which, which is just ignorance, right? But when some people are taught correctly and prayed for, a lot of times their lives can really begin to change. Some people don't have the will to want to change, and, and I understand that. Some people will never change. And we can't necessarily focus on that, right? Some people will never change. Some people don't have the will. But I want to ask on here today, who is willing to intercede for the nations of people? Where are those people that will become houses of prayers for all the nations? Houses of prayers for the body of Christ? Houses of prayers for other ministries? Houses of prayers for politics? Come on here, somebody. Acts chapter 12, verses 5. I want you guys to read Acts chapter 12, verses 5. It says, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. I want to show y'all the power of prayer and intercession for our brothers and sisters. Verse 6 says, the night before Hurrah was to bring him to trial. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and chains fell off Peter's wrist. This is the power we have when we pray and intercede for other people. Come on here, somebody. Immediately angels are dispatched to come and fight for us in the realm of the spirit. How many times have you prayed for someone and God came through for that person? Or maybe you've never tried to pray for somebody. Think about the shackles and chains that will begin to fall off people's lives when we get serious about interceding for them. Verse 9 says, Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city and the iron gate began to open for them by itself and they went through it. When we pray and we fast without season, chains are broken, prison doors are being opened, generational curses are being broken and supernatural things begin to happen in our lives. Come on here. I don't know who this is for today, but I hope this is for somebody. I was praying for someone a few weeks ago, right? And she couldn't make her rent. The very next day, somebody came and paid her rent in full. I prayed for people on my live videos. Demons began leaving them. Demons began, you know, uh, getting cast out of them. The question is, do you guys believe in the power of prayer? I've preached and prayed for people and led them to coming back to Jesus and led them to their, to their salvation. Now, I'm not saying this to brag or to take any credit for what God is doing. But what I'm saying is, is the power of prayer is real. The power of prayer is real. When we allow God to train and equip us and allow him to give us a clean heart, our prayers become supernatural weapons that are able to scatter the works of Satan in high places. Come on here, somebody. Now listen, now God can begin to use us. Think about how your children's lives will change if we prayed over them every single day. Think about if ministries all over the world began to pray and intercede for our nation, even pray for people in politics, pray for people in the music industry. When two or more gather in my name, there they are with me and I with them. Listen, when you you gather in prayer groups with other warriors in Christ, supernatural things begin to happen and things begin to shift in the realm of the spirit. When we begin to focus on shifting things in the realm of the spirit, we are going to see the physical manifestations of that here on earth. When we begin to fast and pray, angels are empowered and they're dispatched in the realm of the spirit to come and fight for us. But listen, check this out. You notice a lot of times in the Bible, the angels are on our command. The angels actually listen to us. Yes, the angels of God, they actually listen to us. When Daniel was fasting and praying, Archangel Michael was dispatched to come and help Angel Gabriel, which was able to give Angel Gabriel the ability to give Daniel the answer to his prayers. Come on here, somebody. Listen, the angels are on our command. When we fast and pray, we are dispatching angels to come and fight for us in the realm of the spirit, therefore scattering the works of Satan. 
It's time for us to intercede for the nations and generations. We are called to pray and intercede for the nations. The lack of prayer in our nations, in our politics, in our media, in our government is the reason why the enemy has been able to advance his agenda against us. So many churches just sit back and do nothing and say things like, oh, well, we just have to trust and believe that God is in, uh, in control. And it's like, forget all that. Now we as his people have been given the power and authority to become God's enforcers here on earth. Listen, Jesus did not die on the cross for us to continue to suffer. He died on the cross to strip principalities and powers of their authority and dominion and give it back to us. Come on here, somebody. He died on the cross to give us the keys to death in Hades. He died on the cross to open the doors to prison doors. Listen, he died on the cross to give us the keys to open prison doors, to empower us, to restore the broken, to set the captives free and empower us. And um, I'm sorry, to empower others to walk in dominion and walk in the supernatural power of God. So what are we doing sitting back here and, and waiting for something to happen and just watching our world die? He died on the cross to give us the keys to open those doors. Jesus died on the cross it was to empower us to take authority and dominion back over principalities, powers, might, and dominion. Yes, we have 450. Let's keep going up. Let's keep going up. Listen, the law of prayer and intercession, people, the law of prayer and intercession is the highest law and has the power to overcome any other laws by sanctioning God's intervention. Groups of powerful men and women of God praying all over the world have the power to overturn certain decisions. We have the power to command a shift in the realm of the spirit, which can lead to a shift even in the physical realm. We can overturn injustices, overturning laws that were enforced by the spirit of antichrist. When we live lives of sanctification, lives of fasting, lives of prayer, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 8 through 9, it says, none of the rulers of this age understood it. For if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Isaiah 6 verses 8. What does it say? Isaiah 6 verses 8 says, Who shall be sent as a messenger for this people? Who on here today wants to be sent out by God to intercede for the nations and generations? So listen, what I'm saying is when we begin to live lives of sanctification, lives of fasting, lives of prayer, it begins to open up the di dimension in which the wisdom and the mystery of, the, of God's will is revealed to us. Now we have the wisdom and the power to systematically tear down the powers of darkness in high places. <clears throat> Come on here, somebody. Listen, there is no more time for God's people to sit back and watch the world die, waiting for something to happen. We have been given the power and authority to intercede. Jesus taught his disciples how important it was to pray. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God has actually, check this out, God has actually limited himself. I want y'all to understand this. God has actually limited himself from enforcing his will on earth unless we pray. He sits back and he doesn't act. God and heaven have the will for something to have happen, but heaven awaits man's initiative to pray and intercede for that will to happen here on earth. So God wills it in heaven, but it's our job as human beings to enforce God's will here on earth, here in the natural realm. So God's will is not done by overriding or ignoring the will of mankind. And that's why the world has become completely morally corrupt. So God actually holds his hands back while he seeks for a person that's willing to intercede, someone who's willing to be used by heaven, who on here today is willing to intercede. Listen, somebody say, I want to intercede. Write in the comments, I want to intercede. Who on here today is, be, oh, is willing to become a vessel? Who on here today is willing to become an enforcer for the kingdom of heaven? Come on here, somebody. God's will, God wills it in heaven, but man wills it here on earth. The Bible says since the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. We have the ability to command and enforce the will of God here on earth. We have the ability to command and enforce what we want to see here in this physical realm. Come on here, somebody. As soon as we understand that, we can begin to shift nations and generations for the kingdom of heaven. We can begin to have the power to draw multitudes of people under the kingdom of heaven. We can have the power to set the captives free. We can have the power to restore the lost and the broken. We can have the power to teach people to take their dominion and walk in the supernatural power of God. I'm willing to intercede. Somebody say, I'm willing to intercede. I want to intercede. I want to intercede. Come on here, somebody. 
Rumba shedere pika randa shedere baka roski bata. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody listening under the sound of my voice. As we step in this new year, as we step into this new season, I pray that you train and equip your people to become intercessors. I pray that you would train and equip your people to intercede, oh God. I pray that you would ignite that flame in their hearts, oh God. Motivate them and make them hungry to intercede for your people. Make your people a people of wisdom. Make us a people of prayer, oh God. I pray that you are that our house souls become houses of prayer. I pray that you would motivate and encourage your people to walk in dominion, to walk in authority, walk in power, and walk in your supernatural power in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray that you would intervene, oh God. I pray that you would train and equip us to do the works that you sent us to do. I pray that you bring us into a higher realm and dimension of revelation. Help us to grow in the things of your spirit, oh God. I pray that you would give your people the grace to walk in power and walk in authority and walk in dominion in this season. I break and dismantle every demonic attack against our lives. I cancel every plan of Satan from manifesting in our physical lives in Jesus' name. All witchcraft be renounced in Jesus' name. All voodoo, all sorcery attacks, all demonic manipulations against your life be renounced and denounced in Jesus' name. That witchcraft power, that juju power, that voodoo power, that santeria power, I break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft altar that your name has been brought to to curse your life. I break and release your name from that altar and I send fire on that altar in Jesus' mighty name. Train and equip your people, O oh God. Empower us to walk in your supernatural power in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would cleanse our hearts, O oh God. Purify our minds and create in us a heart that desires and aligns with your will for our life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I pray that you would release your legions of angels to wage war on behalf of your people. Release your ministering spirits, O oh God, to give us correction and direction in this hour. I pray that you would train and equip your kingdom leaders, O oh God. I pray that we would even come into a season where we would have more kingdom leaders that would get open doors of opportunities to come into positions of leadership, to come into positions of power. I pray that kingdom leaders would be able to come into uh, political roles and government roles, oh God, so that we can bring change and transformation to politics, to the justice system, to the school system, and to, the all, uh, uh, and to all the nations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Whoo! Man, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How's everybody doing on tonight? Listen, <clears throat> listen, listen, listen. Holy Spirit, I pray. Uh, I pray that you will protect our children from the corruption and the wickedness of this world, oh God. I pray that you would protect them even from being defiled by demonic influences at their schools. I pray that all the, uh, the, the politicians, all the governors that have corrupt agendas, I pray that you scatter their works and that you begin to bring them to a place of repentance in the name of Jesus. I pray that all injustices be overturned. I pray that laws that defile your word, laws that were enforced by the Antichrist spirit be overturned in this hour and eradicated in the name of Jesus. I pray that the plans of the enemy in high places to, to, uh, to destroy the economy, plans in high places that were intended to keep people bound, keep people enslaved, to keep people in poverty. I pray that those plans become frustrated in the name of Jesus. All injustices, all people who have been wrongly convicted and falsely accused of scandal, people whose reputations have been destroyed, I pray that you restore them in Jesus' name. I pray that you expose all pending covert attacks of the enemy against our lives. I pray that you expose the enemy's agenda in the name of Jesus. I pray that you begin to remove the veil from over your people's eyes. Draw your people back unto you, O oh God. Draw your people back unto you. Draw our children back unto you in this season. And I pray that our politicians and our governors, O oh God, people in positions of leadership, people in positions of power, I pray that they would follow your laws and commands. I pray that they would they, uh, they would be empowered by you, O oh God, to set forth and establish your divine order here on earth. I pray for a shift and a transformation in the hearts and the minds of people in power, people in leadership positions, Positions, our governors, our politicians, oh God, our school system, in the name of Jesus. 
in Jesus' mighty and exalted name. I pray for a shift in this season, oh God. I pray for a shift in this season. I pray that you open our hearts, open our minds to you, oh God. I pray that you continue to help your people grow and develop into becoming the people, the men and the women of God, the intercessors, the apostles, the prophets, the activists that you created them to be. I pray that you would expand our influence, expand our leadership ability in this season, oh God. I pray that you would increase us in the prophetic, oh God. Increase us even in spiritual ranking. I pray that you would train and equip your people to become spiritual snipers and enforcers for the kingdom of heaven. Motivate and encourage your people. I pray that the same courage and the same bravery, the same confidence that fell upon Paul, the same confidence that fell upon David to slay giants, I pray that that fall upon your people in this season in Jesus' mighty and exalted name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Whoo, listen, listen, listen. I'm, I'm over here losing my voice. I was in prayer for an hour earlier today and I was like yelling in prayer and now I'm all losing my voice and stuff man I hate when that happens <laughs> fire fire listen I pray that God will begin to fill you with fire anybody who came on here depressed or feeling discouraged anybody that came on here depressed or discouraged I pray that God will begin to ignite that flame back in your heart I pray that you would become hungry for the word of God, hungry for the things of God. I pray that you would be motivated and encouraged to be somebody, and a vessel, an enforcer, somebody who uh, uh, was sent to bring change and transformation upon the nations and the kingdoms. Somebody that was sent to tear down the kingdoms of darkness in high places, tear down the works of Satan, tear down the strongholds of Satan in high places. Come on here, somebody. Apostle Jordan Lawrence. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. I will be a future apostle, but I am not yet an ordained apostle. That's funny uh, that this, this you say that because this year, I'm actually, I'll be going through my apostolic training this year. I will be going through my apostolic training this year. God is all glory to God, all glory to God. I can't take no credit for what he's doing in my life. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, I'm from Rockford, Illinois. How did you know that? <clears throat> Listen, um, anybody who wants to be a part of my church, Kingdom of Hand International Ministries, it's not my church, but it's my, my apostolic parents, Apostles Jermell and Carrie Anthony. They have a church in Chicago, Kingdom at Hand International Ministries. If you guys want to be a part of what we got going on, we have Sunday service at 12 p.m. Central Time. We have Monday morning evangelism. We have Monday night discipleship. All right. We, we go through a lot of training and equipping. We have very powerful and very anointed spiritual parents that are great mentors. And I promise you guys will be blessed by their ministry and blessed by their teachings. If you guys want to be a part of that, direct message me and I will be sending out the email uh, for that Zoom link so you guys can hop on with us and join us. And it's the same Zoom link every week. So it's all we have 12 p.m. Central Time on Sunday for church service. We have 10 a.m. Central Time on Monday, 6 p.m. Central Time on Monday. And then we have Thursday morning at 10 a.m. again for deliverance training. We talk about a lot of things. We talk about deliverance. We talk about demons and evil spirits. We talk about witchcraft. We talk about all that stuff. How do you join? Again, direct message me and send me your guys' email link, uh, emails. I will be sending out the Zoom link to everybody's email. Amen, amen. <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I'm glad you guys all got on here. I pray that this word really resonated with somebody. <clears throat> I pray that this word really opened somebody's eyes. I pray that this word began to motivate and encourage you to actually apply it to your life. And I pray that somebody be encouraged today to walk in purpose and to become an enforcer for the kingdom of heaven. I pray that somebody on here today be encouraged and dedicate their lives to becoming an enforcer for the kingdom of heaven. Come on here. <clears throat> 
I will be reposting this live on my YouTube channel. For everybody who hasn't um, subscribed to my YouTube channel, go to my TikTok page and click on the YouTube link in the bio and it'll take you right to my YouTube play, uh, page. Go subscribe for me. I, I post a lot more content on there. I repost all my live videos. I have my testimony on there. It's all the way at the bottom. Um, yeah, go subscribe to my YouTube channel or if you just want to look it up, it's Evangelist Jordan. Amen, amen. Twelve a.m. in the U.K. I don't. Mm. I'm not sure. You're gonna have to look up. Look up U.K. time. What's the difference between U.K. and Central Time? The time difference between U.K. and Central Time. Look it up on Google. It'll tell you. Six hours. So if we have 12 p.m. Central Time Sunday service, okay, are you guys six hours before or six hours behind? Because it would either be six in the morning or it would be six at night that you would be getting on for our service. Six hours ahead of us. Okay, so you'd be getting on at 6 p.m. And Monday nights at 6 p.m., you'd be getting on at 12 a.m. 10 o'clock in the morning, you'd be getting on at what, 4 p.m.? Well, the church that I evangelize for is in Chicago, Illinois. I'm about an hour out from Chicago. Amen, amen, and amen. <clears throat> Listen, for everybody who wasn't on for the whole live video, I will be downloading this video and I will be reposting this live on my YouTube channel. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to go to my TikTok page, the YouTube link is in the bio. I also still have my digital ebook out called Breaking Ungodly Soul Ties. The Amazon link is also in the bio if you, bio if you guys want to purchase that. Hey, everybody needs to read a book on Breaking Ungodly Soul Ties. Amen. How many of you have been in toxic relationships? <clears throat> um, how often do I go live? Listen, I'm going to start going live a lot more often. I, I used to go live almost every day. And for the past couple of months, I've only been doing like once a week because I just, you know, I've been busy. I've been doing a lot, but I'm going to try to to start going live again at least a few times a week. Um, I'll be going live probably on Wednesday. Pray for rent and finances. Heavenly Father, in Jesus name, I just want to pray for Jen right now. I place and apply the blood of Jesus over her life, oh God. I pray that you would begin to move supernaturally in her life. Release your legions of angels to wage war on her behalf, O God. And I pray that you release your ministering spirits, O God. Give her correction. Give her direction, O God. Give her innovation and creativity. I pray that you begin to open up new doors of opportunity for new streams of income in the name of Jesus. I pray that you give her the wisdom and the knowledge and the ability that she needs to overcome this, the ability that she needs to break through financially and to make things happen, oh God. Anoint her heads, her hand, and hands, and her feet in this hour, oh God. I pray that you would expand the mantle and the anointing that is upon her life in the name of Jesus. I pray that her rent be paid, oh God. Move supernaturally in her life. I pray for angelic activity when it comes to her finances and her rent being paid in the name of Jesus. I pray for a supernatural natural miracle in her life in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare generational wealth, prosperity and financial breakthrough to fall upon her and her children and her family in the name of Jesus. Not even sure if you have children, but I just wanted to pray that. <laughs> um, amen and amen. What's your daughter's name? Whoever miss here is, I just want to pray for your daughter in the name of Jesus. I pray for angelic activity in the realm of the spirit. I pray that the person, the landlord that is looking at her application, I pray that they would open up that door of opportunity for her. I pray that, she, that um, God, that you would present to her a place to live. Give her the keys to that place in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare approval for her apartment in Jesus' mighty and exalted name. Hey. 
Hey, listen, sometimes, like, sometimes if y'all want prayer too, I want y'all to like start putting your names because some of you guys don't have like your actual names on TikTok. So it's like, if I'm going to pray for you, I have to have like a name that I can target that name and that person. Um, hey, we have 6 p.m. discipleship program in literally about 13, 14 minutes. So I'm about to have to get up off of here, y'all. But if you guys want to be a part of our ministry, just uh, direct message me. Send me your guys' emails. Again, I will be sending out that Zoom link to you guys. Yes, 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 yes. I want to pray for Josh right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for a supernatural deliverance and healing in Josh's life. I pray that any trauma, any pain that he has gone through, any rejection that he has, that he has dealt with, that has led to his addiction, I pray that you heal him from these things. Heal his emotions. Heal his psychological pathways in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would deliver him from addiction. Right now in Jesus' name, I bind and rebuke that spirit of addiction that is operating in his life. In Jesus' mighty and exalted name, I bind and I take authority over that spirit of addiction and I command you out of his life. I bind you indefinitely in the name of Jesus. I pray and I decree and declare healing and a deliverance, restoration over Josh's life now in the name of Jesus. Give him discipline, oh God, willpower and self-control. Give him the strength to overcome any temptation and any attack of the enemy against his life. In Jesus' mighty and exalted name, cleanse him and purify him, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, I'm sorry. There's a lot of people on here. I'm sorry if I can't get everybody in prayer because I have to get up off of here. I have to get on for church service tonight for discipleship program or um, discipleship training. I'm sorry. I want to pray for Evelyn, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you deliver her from depression. Right now, I bind that spirit of depression. I bind that spirit of spiritual slumber, that spirit of spiritual tiredness, fatigue, that spirit of discouragement, that spirit of feeling hopeless. I bind and rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus, and I render you powerless in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would encourage Evelyn, oh God. I pray that you would empower her and motivate her in this season. I pray that courage, that joy, that abundance, I pray that your love would begin to fill her and saturate her in this season in Jesus' name. And I pray that her daughter, Cassandra, will be delivered from her eating disorder, oh God. Take full reign and dominion over her diet and over her disorder order and I pray that you give her deliverance and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, there's a lot of people that want, to, that want prayer for finances and health, okay? So I'm going to pray for everybody that's dealing with uh, health issues and finances. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I want to pray for your supernatural healing power and your healing waters, oh God, to begin to flow through anybody whose family members may be sick or dealing with sickness uh, or disease or infirmities. Right now, I bind the spirit of infirmity 
in the name of Jesus, any chronic pain, any viruses, any diseases be diminished and dissolved by the fire of God in Jesus mighty name. I loose healing over you now in the name of Jesus. I loose healing over your family members in Jesus name. And I pray that God will give you the wisdom, the knowledge, the creativity and the innovation to do what you need to do and to take action and to making those plans and visions and ideas that he has for your life come to pass in Jesus name. I pray that you would take action and take it by force. That vision that God has for your life, that business that God has for your life. I pray that you would take it by force in the name of Jesus. I pray that God would empower you to do the works that he sent you to do in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would grow in the things of his spirit. I pray that he begins to open your mind. I pray that he gives you new revelation of your assignment, new revelation of who you are, because when you get revelation of who you are, revelation of your gifts in your assignment, that is when things begin to shift and change in your life. Amen. So many people are praying for financial breakthrough, but you have to understand financial breakthrough, that's going to come after you receive internal breakthrough. So that's why when I'm praying for finances, I'm praying that you, you know, that you begin to walk in purpose because you walking in purpose is going to bring that breakthrough that you want. But I want to decree and declare financial breakthrough over everybody listening under the sound of my voice. Clean them, oh God. Give them purified hearts and cleanse their minds in this season. Anoint their head, their hands, and their feet and give them the ability, oh God. Expand and stretch the ability that they have to be able to demonstrate your power and demonstrate the gifting that you have given unto them. I pray that they would walk in their God-given purpose with no hindrances or delays. I buy Bind up that spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus, and I release the spirit of increase into their finances in Jesus' mighty and exalted name. I pray for angelic activity and supernatural breakthrough. I pray that that door of opportunity that has been shut on their life, I pray that that door be open now in the name of Jesus. Every blessing, every opportunity that has missed them, I call upon the angel of the Lord to flip that blessing back to you now. Open doors of opportunity, new streams of income in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, I got to get up off of here, y'all. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday, Wednesday night, Wednesday night around five or six. Amen. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. And God bless. Again, if you guys want to be a part of our ministry, our discipleship training, etc., email me, direct message me uh, your emails. I'm sorry, direct message me your emails and I will be sending you guys out the Zoom link. I love y'all and God bless.